What's going on guys, no guys here, welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to go over shooting tutorial. Now, shooting encompasses many things, it depends on the player, it depends on the positioning. So we're going to break it down into three segments. We're going to go over positioning of the shot, that will take into account the player stats, etc, etc. We're going to go over the types of shots, you know, like a normal shot, a chip shot, etc. We're going to go over that. And then finally we're going to go over the time shot. We went over this briefly in the free kick tutorial, um, but we'll go over it again just as a reminder. So the first one is positioning of the shot. Now, there's many things that are taken into account. Obviously, the player's finishing stat is ultimately the most important thing, but so is, for example, things like shot power and composure. If you're taking a shot from outside the box, long shot is the most important stat. That's the one that takes into account most. If you're shooting from inside the box, then the most important stat is finishing. If you're shooting around just the edge of the box, it's a combination of both finishing and long shots. So when you're looking for a player, if you want to get the highest statistical chance of scoring inside the box, look for someone that's got really good finishing. Now, other things that are important, if someone's got a five-star weak foot, for example, someone like Sun or someone like Ben Yedder or someone like Eusebio, you can take a shot equally with either foot. So those are things that are very important when deciding what player to get. So if you get a player with a bad weak foot, he's basically only one footed up front. Now, above everything is the positioning of the shot. Now, make sure you're facing towards the goal. Don't take a shot if you're facing away from goal. Make sure you're facing forward towards the goal. The next best thing is to make sure you're jogging with the left analog stick. Don't hold the R2 or the run button. If you hold the run button, there'll be a lot of inaccuracy in the shot. So you want to be holding the jogging button, which is basically the left analog stick. You want to move with that, as you can see in these clips, and then you can take a shot towards goal. We're going to go to shot types later on, but we're going to talk about basic shooting for now. Make sure you face towards the goal. Now, what you can do is you can create an off angle, like a 45 or 90 degree, degree angle. This is actually really beneficial because if you're straight on, head on towards goal, you'll find that if you take a shot, sometimes the goalkeeper might save it or parry it away because you're shooting in his vicinity. But if you take a 45 or 90 degree angle towards goal, you'll find that it will aim more towards the corner. So you've got a higher chance of scoring as if you face the goal, you're jogging, that means you just moved your left analog stick, you're not doing anything else, and you take a shot when you create an angle. Those are the most important things in regards to shooting. Now we're going to go over the types of shots. Now, types of shots, in this FIFA, in all honesty, there's no good way of scoring. It doesn't matter if you shoot near post or far post, like last year, in last year's iteration, near post was effective. It's not the same this year. So I'm going to run through the different types of shots, when they should be used and where they should be used. Because in all honesty, this year, there's a range of shots that can be used and there's no real actual method of actually scoring consistently, should I say. So the first one is a normal shot. I'm sure many of you guys know that. Circle or B. Um, circle if you're on PlayStation. B if you're on Xbox. is very, very effective. Of course, the further you are away, the more power you need. And the closer you are, the less power you need. This you need a bit more power than you think. So I would say just about over, just about over two bars of power when you're inside the box if you want to shoot as you can see in some of these examples. And you can shoot either near post or far post. This year, the shot power is important because the more power you have, it's harder for your opponent's goalkeeper to save it. So remember that one. Shot power is actually important. If the player's got a good shot power, you'll find that most of your shots will go in um, because there's more, I suppose you can say, velocity when the ball is moving and therefore it'll be easier to get it into the back of the net. Normal shots are good in every angle. So if you're running from one angle, um, you can try taking a shot across goal. That's also effective. Or you can take a shot near post. A cross goal is only effective if you're running inside the box and you're taking a shot across. Otherwise, any area we're aiming either to the left or to the right is completely fine. Now I want to go over the chip shot. That is basically a normal shot, but you just hold the L1 button. Now this is very, very effective. If there's a goalkeeper coming towards you, for example, some of these examples, the goalkeeper comes towards me, you can do a chip shot and the ball is elevated chip shot above the goalkeeper. Now, just like with finishing, um, with normal shots, the more power you apply, the more dip it will have or the more chip power it will have. So Bear in mind, it does take some time to get used to. You'll have to practice this inside the game. Um, but if the goalkeeper ever runs out or you see the goalkeeper off his line, you can always do a L1 plus a shot button to do a chip shot. There's also some angles, for example, like here. These are angles where the goalkeeper is basically off his line. You can do chip shots to score from these angles. Now, these take a lot of time to practice. But once you get them, the chip shots from these angles, they're actually very, very effective. So do remember chip shots from these 
cross shot angles. But generally speaking, a chip shot should only be used if the goalkeeper is off his line or if the goalkeeper is coming out to collect the ball. Now finesse shots is basically by holding the R1 or the RB button and holding a shoot button. Now it's the exact same thing as a normal shot except for the shot is taken with the inside of the foot, not with the laces. So with these types of shots, generally you have less power, so you might need more power to overcompensate for that. Um, but finesse shots have curve applied to it. So it depends on the player's finishing and their curve stat. If they got the finesse shot trait and they have good curve and they've got good finishing, the more curve that will be applied to the shot. So generally speaking, if you're outside the box, I would say around the penalty arc, you can use a finesse shot. So it's very, very simple. You simply hold the R1 button or RB for an Xbox and you press the shoot button and you use it inside your foot and you apply a lot of curve. This one is important to make sure you get the 45 or 90 degree angle. That way the curve is applied towards the top corner. Um, you want to basically have a bit more power than a normal shot, as I mentioned, because you get the ball into the top bins or into the back of the net in the top corners. You need to make sure you apply a bit more power to compensate because the finesse is, of course, on the inside of the foot and there is less power applied. They may need to be used if the goalkeeper is again off his line, you want to curve it into the top right corner or top left for that matter. Or let's say, for example, if you're outside the box, I find that finesse shots are very, very effective around the penalty arc. If you can time it, even better. We'll go through that in the next segment. But finesse shots are very, very effective, especially outside the box and inside the box from very tight angles. Now, the low driven shot is another type of shot that is actually very effective in the game. Again, it's very simple to do. You want to basically hold the L1 plus R1 and the shoe button together. So it's a bit more complicated to do, um, but it's very effective, very close to the goalkeeper. What this type of shot is, it's a very high powered shot that is on the ground. So there's no elevation towards it. Um, if you apply a lot of power, you just have more power applied to a driven shot and it might be ele elevated just a slight bit. So low drivens are very effective, but the negative side to them is that if you use a low driven, they are somewhat inaccurate if you are far away from goal. So low driven should only be used if you're basically around about five to 10 yards away from the goal and you wanna have a low driven shot, a power shot into a corner. It is very, very effective. Now, I just wanna say these are all different types of shots, but me personally, I just use regular power shots. There are some situations where I use chip shots. Um, for example, if the goalkeeper comes out or sometimes I use a finesse shot from outside the box but most of the time I just use a normal shot. So don't be too confused about using all these different types of shots in different situations. Yes, they have their effective regions, but I'll be honest, if you just are new to FIFA, I just use new normal shots and it's completely fine. So don't worry about that. So normal shots are very effective in my opinion inside the box. Now, finally, I want to go over time shooting. Now we briefly mentioned about this in the free kicks at all. I talked about time shooting. Now time shooting, is an additional feature, you don't have to use it. You can turn this on in the settings by having time shooting on. Now, if you're playing foot champions or you're playing rivals, you will not see the bar above the player's head to know when you've timed the shot. So the question is, well, how do you know? Well, similar to free kicks, you basically wanna press the shot button once and you wanna press the shot button again just before your player is about to hit the ball. If you time it correctly, you'll get a green time shot. Now, what a green time shot means is that if you take a shot and you green it, it means that you'll have an increase of power and accuracy to the shot. So generally speaking, if you green time a shot, there's a higher chance, statistically speaking, of you scoring that chance. If you do it just a tad bit too early, you'll get a yellow shot. A yellow shot is called an early shot. What that means is, is that you'll have maybe a bit more improvement, but sometimes it depends on the type of shot. So normally, for example, if it's a finesse shot, it gets improved a little bit, but sometimes if it's a normal shot, it doesn't get proved at all. Um, so it's a kind of a balancing act. You basically want to hit it green all the time. And then finally, you have a red time shot. If you do a red time shot, that means you're doing it too early and that will negatively impact your shot. So you're actually better off doing a normal shot as opposed to a red time shot. And then finally, you have the last one, which is basically a gray time shot. And a gray time shot just basically means untimed, that you missed the timing. So if you shoot and you get a gray icon above your player's head, that just means it's a regular untimed shot. So don't worry about that too much. That just means it means a regular shot and you lose nothing for it. So the key thing is, where do you want to aim? Now I say ideally hit it a bit later. That way you don't hit it early and you don't hit it red. So that way you have either green or gray. And that way either becomes a normal shot 
or a boosted shots. That is basically the efficiency point. So just between the green area or the too late area is the efficiency point. So that's why I say take a shot normally. And I'm going to pause it here or slow it down here just before the player is about to hit the ball. As you can see, I press the shoot button again. And that is how I get the green time shot. So you're better off hitting it later because that way it can only either be a green time shot or a gray shot. It can only be a positive. But if you do it too early, it will be a red time shot or a yellow shot, which could be potentially worse than a normal shot. So that's why when you're doing the time shooting, it does take a lot of practice. I would say look at the player's feet. Press the shoot button once. And just before your player is about to hit the ball, press the shoot button again. You can just tap it and it'll end up becoming a time shot. So the first shot, so if you hold the, the shoot button down for like a second, that's how much power you apply. Just before your player is about to hit the ball, press the shot button again, and you can end up getting a time shot. They're very, very effective, especially in these 1v1 situations, if you have time on the ball. If you don't have time, a regular shot will suffice. You don't have to do time shooting. Don't forget, it's only if you want to, you can do a regular shot. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I just shoot most of the time with regular shots. But let's say, for example, if the angle is a bit difficult, or it's a bit of a harder shot, or it's outside the box, a green time shot then is very, very effective. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video in terms of shooting. And that is the best methods of shooting in terms of positioning, shot type, and of course, time shooting.